This video is a review of what we learned week one in the year 2016. So we started with some conceptual work of what the derivative is. The derivative is the slope of the line tangent at a point on a curve. So we learned that in general, if we have a nice smooth continuous curve f of x and we choose any point on that curve that we're going to be at some value x and our y value would be some value f of x. That makes this ordered pair x comma f of x. Now we have this second point somewhere to the right could be to the left, but we're going to go to the right. And it's some distance away from x, which we're going to call h. That means we've traveled x, and then we've traveled h, makes this value x plus h. So when we plug into our function, our y value is going to be f of x plus h. That makes the second ordered pair, x plus h, comma, f of x plus h. Now the idea is, what we currently have here is a secant line. And the trick with derivatives is to somehow get a slope that instead of using two points, which would be a secant line, we want one point, which would make it a tangent line. So the theory is we're going to take this second point and we're going to move it towards the first point. Now, as we move it towards that first point, this h value gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, if we take the original two points and we do the slope of the secant, using the slope formula we learned in Algebra 1, we would get y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. This simplifies as f of x plus h minus f of x over h, and that's called the difference quotient. Now our problem with the difference quotient is we've got an h on the bottom. And our goal is to make this h value 0. Well, we can't have a 0 in the denominator. So that is the uh, difficulty with doing a derivative, is somehow dealing with that h value. So let's take a look with what we did with this conceptually. So perhaps we have uh, this problem uh, for the function f of x equals 2x squared. Find the slope of the secant line through x is 1 at the slope with secant x equals 2. So we start off using our initial value of x equals 1. We already have uh, uh, our function f of x. So if I find f of 1, that's going to give me 2. And then our second point for our secant is going to be at 2. So we want to find f of 2. Well, if I plug in 2, I get 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. So now I've got my two points. My slope of the secant using x equals 2 would be subtract the y's on top, subtract the x's on the bottom, and I would get a slope for my secant of 6. Now let's generalize that for any second point. x is 1 plus h. So our function is still f of x is equal to 2x squared. We are still using f of 1, and f of 1 would be 2. But now our second point is a generalized point 1 plus h. Well, if I want to find f of 1 plus h, I'm going to have to substitute 1 plus h in for x, which gives me 2 times 1 plus h squared. 
we can do a little simplifying by foiling this. If we foil this, we get 1 plus 2h plus h squared. So f of 1 plus h is 2 plus 4h plus 2h squared. This would be our second point. We still have our first point. Using slope formula, we would have y2, which was 2 plus 4h plus 2h squared, minus uh, y1, which was 2. And then we have x sub 2, which was 1 plus h, minus x sub 1, which was 1. We can simplify. The 2's are going to cancel on the top. The 1's are going to cancel on the bottom. We now have 4h plus 2h squared over h. That would be a generalized formula for the slope of any second point. If we want to get the slope of the tangent line, then we somehow need to make h 0. We know we can't have a 0 on the bottom of a fraction, but if we use our tremendous algebra skills, we can drop an f-bomb on the top. That would be factoring. So if I factor out an h, I'm not going to factor out the 2 because I'm not really interested in that part. Uh, if I take out the h, I get a 4 plus 2h on the inside. I've got an h on the bottom. Now the h's can be removed. So I now have 4 plus 2h. And if I make h 0, then I would have a slope of 4. That's the theory that we worked with a little bit in the first week. Beyond that, we worked with the power rule. So the power rule is any time we want to take the derivative of, and that's what ddx means. That means take the derivative of. And we're in the form ax to the n, where a is some coefficient and n is your exponent. The power rule says to multiply the coefficient times the exponent, leave the x, and then subtract 1 from your exponent. Let's do an example of that. We have dy dx is equal to 5 times 4 is 20. x, subtract 1 from 5, you get 4. Second term, negative 6 times 3 would be negative 18. x, subtract 1 from 3, we get 2. Uh, this is now 2 times 1. So if we go 2 times 1, we get 2. When you subtract 1 from 1, you end up with x to the 0. And since anything to the 0 power is 1, we can leave that term as just 2. Our constant, the derivative of a constant, is 0. If we think about it as x to the 0 power, when we multiply the negative 1 times the 0, we get 0. In our second example, dy dx, we learned to memorize root x as 1 over 2 root x. We can prove that by thinking of it as x to the 1 half power. Then when we use the power rule, we get 1 half x to the negative 1 half power. And of course, we can move the negative exponent to the bottom of a fraction and rewrite it as a radical. My Second term, 1 over x, we can think of that as 1x to the negative 1. That gives us negative 1x to the negative 2. And we can write that as negative 1 over x squared. Our third term, we multiply negative 3 times 2 thirds. The 3's would cancel out, giving us uh, negative 2x. 2 thirds minus 1 would be negative 1 third. And we could write that as negative 2 over the cube root of x. Remember, a fractional exponent, the denominator is your index. 
and the numerator is the exponent on the inside. In our next example, uh, we're just going to continue to practice various items. dy dx is equal to, again, 4 times 1 half is 2, x, 1 half minus 1 would be the negative 1 half power. Our second term, if we think of that as negative 2x to the negative 3, we would get positive 6x to the negative 4. Our third term, we want to think of that as x to the 2 thirds. Again, our index is our denominator, our exponent is our numerator. If we think of this one, we get 2 thirds x to the negative 1 third. The derivative of x is simply 1, and the derivative of a constant is 0. Notice this time I left these as fractional exponents and negative exponents. Sometimes we leave it alone. Sometimes we do alternate answers. The alternate answer to this would be 2 over root x plus 6 over x to the fourth plus 2 over 3 cube root x plus 1. We also reviewed this week quadrant 1 trig special values, which are the single most important thing we learned in trigonometry for calculus. So we need to make sure that we are good with problems like this. Obviously, sine of pi 6 is 1 half. Cosine of pi fourths is radical 2 over 2. Tangent of pi thirds is radical 3. We should know those just about as quickly as we might know 5 times 4 being 20.